Hey guys, Alex here from Bevelish Creations. I partnered up with Tools today to design and build this really cool bookshelf for my home office. Now what makes it unique is this pattern that wraps around the top corner of the case and then continues down along the door. And I think it's just a look that will capture anyone's attention without overpowering the design of the bookcase. So stick around and let me show you guys how I did it. It made the most sense to begin with the cabinet portion of the build. So I started by cutting the lumber down to their rough length using the Amano Prestige General Purpose Blade, which doesn't have any vibrations because of its 1 10th inch thick tool steel plate. And its electro blue coating helps to dissipate heat buildup that reduces resin accumulation, making it perfect for a project like this. So after the boards were cut, I smoothed out the surfaces on the jointer and milled them down to 3 quarters of inch thick on the planer. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and go ahead and hit that bell so that you'll be notified on all of the new videos when they're released. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Tools Today. And then after cleaning up the last edge at the table saw, I applied glue along those edges of the boards and then clamped them up to make all the panels that are needed for both the case and the doors. After allowing the glue some time to dry, I drew the design on the case and then cut it out using my jigsaw. Now, I chose not to use my CNC for this because I thought it would just look a little bit more natural by hand cutting it and then shaping it with 60 grit sandpaper. And once that was done, it was time to start pouring the epoxy. I used the same epoxy and black pigment that I used on the desk I built a few months ago so that all of my office furniture will all match up. And just like I did for that project, I left the pieces sitting in the shop for about 4 days to let everything fully cure before taking it out of the mold. Now since these panels were too wide for my joiner and planer, I ended up using my Amana RC2261 slap flattening bit in my router along with my flattening jig. What I love about this this bit is the carbide insert tips that can be rotated or swapped out if they ever became dull or damaged. So it'll save you a lot of time and headache from having to buy a new bit if you ever hit a nail while flattening a piece of slab. And since this bit is 2.5 inches in diameter, it was really quick to get these boards cleaned up and then they were ready to be taken over to the table saw to be cut to their final sizes. Also, I want to mention that at this point, the top panel and the left side panel were still a single piece. I did it this way so that when I cross cut them with the blade tilted at 45 degrees, the pattern will match up perfectly when I get the case glued up. After all of the panels were cut to size, I swapped over to my Amana Prestige dado set to cut a rabbit into the back edges for receiving a back panel later on. And then I flipped the boards over to cut a larger rabbit along the front edges which the door panels will sit into. And this will create a 5mm reveal all around the door edges. Before gluing up the case, I sanded the inside surfaces up to 220 grit since they'll be a lot harder to reach after assembly. Now the case wasn't too large to handle so I ended up using the tape method to get it all glued up. Now one thing to note about this case is that 3 of the 4 joints were filled with epoxy so wood glue wouldn't really work and that's why you see me using epoxy for the glue up instead. And after that, all I had to do was just fold the panels up and allow the painter's tape to do all of the work in keeping the joints tight while the epoxy cured. Next, I drew the shape on the left door panel to match the pattern on the top and bottom panels. And just as before, I used my jigsaw to cut out the pattern and filled it in with black epoxy. Now waiting until after the case was glued up to cut the pattern on the door does add a few more days to the build, but the pattern will match up a lot better. And while waiting for the epoxy to cure, I added some holes to the inside of the case for shelf pins. I ended up not using a shelf, but I figured it's probably nice to have this option for later down the road. And it's a lot easier to get these holes drilled before putting in the back panel. And just as I did before, I used the Amana RC2261 slap flattening bit in my router to clean up the door panels before cutting them to the perfect size at my table saw. For this build, I used inset hinges with the soft close feature. Now one thing to note is that the hinge clip needs to be placed relative to the edge of the rabbit instead of the front edge of the case. This is what will allow the door to sit inside of the rabbit to create the reveal around the door. 
So with the cabinet finally done and set aside, I moved on to making the legs. Now for these, I milled eight quarter lumber down to one and a half inches thick and then ripped them down to one and quarter inch wide. Now two of these legs will receive 90 degree cuts on both ends, while the other two will be cut at a six degree angle to get that six degree lean I was looking for. Now before assembly, I used the Amano 49402 chamfer bit in my router table to add a 40 degree bevel along the length of all the leg pieces. Next, I used a straight edge to line up the back and front legs so that I could use a square to lay out the positions of the top and bottom connector pieces, which will be attached using dominoes. And of course, you can also use dowels or whatever other type of joinery you're comfortable with. Now, since the front and rear legs are at different angles, I used one of the six degree off cuts on the front leg when clamping the pieces together in order to apply even pressure to both sides. And then I raised the cabinet about six inches and clamped the legs to it to mark the positions of the dados for holding the shelves. Now this step is so much easier to do with the legs already assembled because I could just set my miter gauge at 90 degrees and cut the dados in both legs in one pass. Once all six of those dados were cut, I broke down some 3 quarter inch plywood for the shelves and glued on hardwood strips to hide those edges. Afterwards, it was time to move on to the glue up. I started that by attaching all of the stretcher pieces and the shelves to one leg assembly first, using clamping squares to hold everything up temporarily. And then I set the opposite leg structure on top of all of that and clamped it up to finish the whole assembly. And all that's left to do now is attach the case to it, and I'm just gonna keep it really simple by using screws for this. But to keep those screws hidden though, I first used the Amana Nomar and countersink bit to create a recess for the screw heads to sit into. And then using the Timberline plug cutters, I made some taper plugs at my drill press that I could then glue into those holes to cover everything up. Now since these were taken from the same wood that was used to make those legs, by the time I flushed them up with the Amana PLP100 plug planer, they're nearly impossible to notice, unless of course you're looking for it. But once all those plugs were cleaned up, the bookshelf is finally complete. And I think whether you're someone who loves to read like me or just want something to display your toy collection, this is just a really great piece to have. And it would look good in just about any room in the house. And you know what? I would love to hear how you might want to use something like this in your home. Alright, once again, this is Alex from Bevelish Creations. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks to Tools Today for making this project possible. Hey, if you guys like this video, subscribe below and click over here for more great videos.